with the container images built, we can run them on a container runtime, such as Docker, for example. So we have our container images up in Docker Hub, and then we can also use an orchestrator to help run the containers for us. So the orchestrator is software that will take in, not surprisingly, code instructions to grab the images and get them up and running, set up the networking between the containers, and also decide which ports the containers will be available to the users. In this example, we're using Docker as our runtime environment, and it's running on top of the Linux VM. And Docker Compose can grab a Compose file. We can store those Compose files in places like GitHub. And then Docker Compose will follow those instructions. If necessary, it can build the containers. If the containers are already available, it can go ahead and deploy them. And so in order to get the containers, it'll do a Docker pull from a repository like Docker Hub. Once the containers are brought back locally, they can then be run on top of the Docker runtime environment. It is possible to run containers without an orchestrator. You can just type in, say, Docker run and tell it what you want to run and give it the different instructions, like if you want to make it available to the users on port 80, you can pass those commands in. If you needed to be able to access the disk or run on a certain Docker network, you can give the instructions for all that right here on the command line and then run different containers, like the web container, for example. And so Docker will grab the image and it'll get that image running. If we look in this window over here, we should be able to see the container listening. So let's look for port 80. And there we see the container is listening on port 80, just as expected. But we would need to repeat that process for all five containers. We would also need to set up the networking. And after doing that, a few times, we would rather just have those instructions inside of a code file. Well, orchestrators can do that job for you. So if you give the instructions to the orchestrator, the orchestrator can set up all the containers and build the networks and set up all the networking. Let's take a look at an example of those instructions in this docker compose.yaml file. There's going to be a section for each image, like the database, database admin, web, and so on. The location of the build files in case the images need to be built. The instructions for what network, in this case, it'll be the Docker virtual network, to connect the image to when it's running. And then if the image needs to be exposed to the users, what port and even network interface to set up the image on. So you'll see that those instructions all the way down through the bottom of the file. Before we run this, make sure that no containers are running. All clear at this point. And then we'll tell Docker Compose software to bring the containers up. And we don't need to tell it that the Docker Compose.yaml file is in the current directory because it assumes that. But if the Docker Compose YAML file were somewhere else, we'd have to pass the path to that, to that as well. So we'll hit enter and we'll let Docker Compose read the YAML file, grab all the instructions, carry them out one by one. It sets up the networks, it's setting up all the containers, and now everything's ready to go. So having the orchestrator is much easier than having to run all those individual commands ourselves. Plus, we're guaranteed a consistent experience and we can store the YAML file as code up in the code repository to help us carry out our pipeline. So we can browse over to the website now on port 80. We can also open up other tabs so we can browse to the, the other locations like the PHP My Admin console and the PHL tab console. And once all the containers get up and running and the websites set up and ready to go, 
then we'll be able to get the application going. So you notice in this case, sometimes the web containers might be easier to start up than say the database container, so there's a lag time while you're waiting for the database to come online. But once the system has a chance to get all these different systems set up, then it'll work just like you expect, and it'll be a consistent experience for the user because it doesn't matter what operating system the containers are running on top of, they're always going to run exactly the same way since they're really just running on top of the container environment. So we see how having the orchestrators is going to be much easier in the long run, much more consistent experience, and gives us all the advantages of turning the orchestrator itself into a set of code instructions that can be stored in code repositories. So that project has all the same advantages of any development project would have. Orchestrators can be difficult to get used to at first because you have to learn yet another way to code instructions and you have to learn how to use the orchestrator, but it's a good investment in the long run to go ahead and learn how to use the orchestrators because of all the advantages they provide.